Greetings, nerds. This is Dina Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, technology. <laughs> yeah. I've messed up on intros before. I did not mess up on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, folks, the reason why it seems like we're so discombobulated as we get started here, my internet's been, like, acting up today. And so whenever we were doing the intro on the first try, just when Sarah said, this is Cena Nerd, if it clicked out. So I was just like, okay, then. <laughs> Something's not right. It completely threw me off. <laughs> It'll it'll do that. It'll yeah. completely throw you off. We got a lot to cover tonight. So we do. I don't want to like focus on all of our connectivity problems too yeah. much. Um, we have a few. We don't have much news. There's a few things that happen. Everybody is going on and on about the the Batman being um, two hours and forty seven minutes without credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't drink don't drink a coke or anything if you're planning on. We all survived Endgame. True. So why can't we survive the Botmon? That is true. I think as long as Marvel and DC spreads out these epic, like time lengths, you know, mm -hmm. a few years apart, then then we can handle it. But I, yeah. I, I, hope, I hope it's the exception, and not not the rule. I I hope the the movie like they're they're i i hope that it's good enough to support that long of a runtime just because i mean endgame and infinity war were long ass movies mm -hmm. a lot of characters yeah characters yeah and i know we got the bad and we got the cat and the batman but we also got a lot of villains and ugh, uh, DC always does this. They go heavy on the villains, and when when I mean we like our multiple heroes. I mean, No Way Home is a long ass movie. Multiple Spideys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was right around two thirty. So, so yeah, just adding a few, you know, add about seventeen more minutes or so. Yeah. So we, we, I guess we're we're conditioned to it now. You're right, but uh, you but. I guess there there is a lot of story to tell, and if you if they if he Matt Reeves cut it down to two forty seven, just imagine how much longer this thing really could have been. I think that I, maybe I don't know if it was this film or another one. I think it may have been like four hours worth of uh, content or something like that. So yeah, the Snyder cut part three. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, and then in other news, Lord of the Rings series on Amazon has released the title The Rings of Power, which is coming September 2nd, 2022. Be on the lookout for that. Um, yeah, and then yeah. We, have, we also have another release date announcement with Star Trek. Um, Will, when is that returning? Yeah, so Star Trek, uh, so the Star Trek Discovery is on their mid-season hiatus, but it returns on February the 10th. Star Trek Picard Season 2 comes on March the 3rd, right before Batman premieres. Okay. And then a new uh, series that's a spinoff of Star Trek Discovery called Star Trek New Worlds, which uh, is focusing on uh, the Starship Enterprise again, but this time under Captain Christopher Pike, who was commander of the Starship before Kirk, uh, starts on May the 2nd. So those are the big things from Star Trek. And I want is to go quickly go back to Lord of the Rings. Um, this is not a retelling of the story that we've seen in the films. This is right. actually it's actually a prequel. Right. So it's like set a thousand years before in second the second age. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yep. That yeah. We've talked about that. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember if we did or not, but I I I had completely forgotten that we had talked about that. But you know. Just to just to, re, re, to to refresh everyone's memory, in, in case you missed it. <laughs> and um, speaking about missing things, you still have not watched Squid Games, right? I've watched part of it. I haven't finished it. Still okay. haven't finished it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, it has been announced that it has been renewed for a season two. <sighs> I we never because Will has not finished it. We never got to do a breakdown of Squid Games. I've I've seen the whole thing. 
I am officially dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not cry during a single episode. I was like the friend I watched it with. She's, I don't think she ever wants to watch a good show with me again. <laughs> I was just so, I don't know. There's something about the main character, which I mm-hmm. just, I despised him the whole entire time. Yeah. I didn't care. Um, I think that's why I haven't gotten back to it. I just didn't find anything comp- that I could really get behind this character on. So, you know, right. I, was kinda, I, I felt like it was work when I was watching it. I didn't feel like it was enjoyment, you know? So oh, definitely no yeah. Boba Fett, which we're not talking about tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But, so I think that's why I haven't gone back to it. I'm just sort of like, eh. yeah, I can I do. I completely understand um, based on the finale, why they're doing a second season. It makes no sense for that to be the end of it. Um, but, and, and I'll probably watch the second season. I am not going to lie. I'm probably going to watch it. Mm-hmm. At the very least, um, just because I'm somewhat of a completionist, and I also the set design is pretty crazy, and I'm curious about what the how the how the second season will be different. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, Squid Games coming back to Netflix. Um, a million billion people are going to watch it. Yeah. Whatever, good for yeah. them. <laughs> um, speaking about other shows, um, Moon Knight, we did get our first official trailer, Oscar Isaac. Okay, Will, yeah. I I watched the majority of the trailer. Mm-hmm. Really? It's a good trailer. It is. It is. Good Even trailer. Though, very good I, trailer. I like to stop the trailers before I feel like they're giving away every single moment in the first episode. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I have... Over time, I have become more like you, where I'm, I'm, to, I'm, I'm getting to that place where, yep, uh, I've seen enough. Don't need, you know, I know when it's coming. Don't need to see it anymore. Yeah, yeah. But the funny thing is, while I'm watching it, I kept, I, I kept thinking to myself, is that really Oscar Isaac? Like, I know it's physically Oscar Isaac. There's just something about his voice, especially in the first yeah. 20 seconds, where I'm like. That does not sound like Oscar Isaac. Yeah, that act, that accent that he was pulling. Um, yeah, it, it, it threw me off as well. Even I, I was uh, watching the football game Monday night, the, and um, the playoff game. And so I, 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 t- I, it was perfect time. And I got back from the gym and I sat down. It was halftime, and I was like, oh, and it came up. And so I was blown away. Even, but it is, it, 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 you're, but you're right about the accent. And even my, and my wife, who's kind of a casual mcu really didn't get into this as deep as i do she was she was like she, you know that's the bellwether as what as far as like whether or not something really like is going to like pop or not and she mm-hmm. was like damn she's like i might watch this one so <laughs> because because of oscar isaac and you know and and how he sounded and everything in the visuals and everything else like that so yeah it, it again it's a great trailer um, he looks like he's going to be really good in it. Um, I'm excited to see it, and um, but I did not watch the full trailer. <laughs> yeah, well, I, mean, it's, I guess it's about I guess it's right around two minutes. I mean, they you know they 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 did what they needed to do because honestly, a lot of fandom is not familiar with with this character for, right. because and so you know the the introduction like many of these characters in the MCU. It's not from the comics, but you know, through these through these live action productions. So, um, so for for many people, this is going to be their first glimpse of Mark Spector. You know, I, I couldn't help but think about uh, Doom Patrol and and, and Jane uh, when you, when you see in the you know dissociative identity disorder, and you know some of those themes that we saw in the trailer. I thought about. Thought, thought about Doom Patrol, and, and, and you know we've seen this type of character in, in comics and live action as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see Oscar's portrayal of a, of a person who is dealing with this disorder in, in this in this new series, especially given that Diane Guerrero has just like killed it with Jane on Doom Patrol. Yeah, definitely. Um. Speaking about other DC properties, Peacemaker yeah. been finally premiered last week. 
Um, they dropped the first three episodes. Last night dropped the fourth episode. Um, from what I hear, a, a very positive reaction. Um, and I say that as if I didn't watch it. <laughs> we both <laughs> watched it. <laughs> we both did. Yep, we um, did. We're both a bit... We had some exchanges, and I think um, we're we're kind of mixed. Like, it's not that I didn't like it. It's not that. Um, but I did find about 75%, of, especially the first two episodes, to be very stereo, like, very paint-by-number. Um, and very, this is... This is who he is. Remember him from this movie, and and he, now he's here. And this is some childhood stuff. Um, and and like what I was telling you earlier this week, well, it just is so similar to the boys. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another show that I referenced that I can't I can't think of right now. Um, but I feel like we're getting a lot of these beats. Um, yeah. And, and it's just too, it's, and again, it's not that it's a bad show. I just, I'm not a fully a hundred percent on board. John Cena, great in this part. Um, Eagly is my favorite supporting oh, yeah. actor. <laughs> yeah. um, I really, the other actors, it, it's not even the actors, it's the characters. Mm-hmm. The, the other supporting cast, I don't care too much about the only one who does really interest me is Amanda Waller's daughter. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I know we, before we were, we were talking about Leota and as far as one of the characters, I think for, for me, so I, I completely agree with you that we've seen a lot of the beats in this show in other properties, like the boys, um, you know, the absurdity of doing patrol. Mm-hmm. And, and and um and so there's you know so there's not th- there's nothing like i would say new and revolutionary there as far as like the 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 tropes i think the thing that w- what really works for me with this series and why it's like clicked and i can't wait to watch the, the fourth episode is a couple things one i think it's just just john cena um he you know he, I think he brings a depth to the character where, uh, yeah, he's this big doofus and alt-right, racist, homophobe, fill-in-the-blank you know, bastard that, that, um, that, you know, we, ultra-nationalist, that kind of thing. But at the same time, you know, when you see, but then when you, whenever you put him in the room with his father, and you and you realize that you know, and this is the environment that that this guy grew up in. And if but for other circumstances, he probably would not have you know he, he would have turned out differently. It's like that whole nature versus nurture kind of uh, discussion that you know happens all the time. I think on in, in his nature, he, you know, I think at his core, he you know, Chris Smith seems like a guy if he was in a different environment would not be. It be like he is and and so so i think you know so like you said we, we have seen this before in other shows as far as the trauma and i mean that's really i guess you know a lot of these shows that we've been talking about recently you know one of the three lines i think we in both dc and in marvel like but one division as well and all and it is the is how people deal with just deal with trauma and so yeah. we're, we're seeing that we're seeing that it, with him with him is it's like his father's relationship and I I haven't seen the fourth episode yet but I understand it's you know they they do pick up on I guess you know because when we when we last saw his dad you know the one of the members of the team stupidly like put his the plate number for from the from the um, place where the meta like exploded. Um, you know, traced it back to to Chris's dad, so Peacemaker's dad. So it's just like, okay, I know we see him in the prison, and they're all around. But you know, he's surrounded with all the other white supremacists, and his dad's an unapologetic white supremacist. So you know, and and, it, and I think about the discussion that they had at the breakfast table as far as you know, the butt kid and that kind of stuff. So that's what I meant by the trauma. 
No, no, I understand what you mean by the trauma. I just, I feel like other shows have done the trauma better because they've had multiple characters. The thing about this show is we're focused so much on, on uh, Peacemaker's trauma that all of the ludicrousy that goes on around is, it's kind of, I don't, I don't know. There's something about it where I'm just like, okay, I've I've seen this kind of stuff before, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, what I found to be more interesting about him is actually this idea of where things ended for him with the Suicide Squad and this yeah. idea that he thinks that he's a hero. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. And then and then now all of a sudden he can't do what he could do best, which was kill people. Like he struggles with that now. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe he does. Maybe it's not as of now because he's he's never killed a kid before um so i don't know there there's something a little bit interesting about that whole and i moral thing and the third episode was probably my favorite episode um i liked how between him and leota they uh they did a good parallel with um, him not being able to shoot the kid and then her struggling to also kill the man um, both turned out to be butterflies. So, um, well, well, actually, so. The, oh, no, they didn't. No, I, don't, I don't know. I yeah, watched the show, I swear, people. I just. Yeah, the, I kid was, the kid was definitely a butterfly. The, the security guard was not. But I, but I agree with your, but you're, you're, you're right. That was a great, that was a really solid piece of like storytelling there. And I think that's, that, those are the elements. Because like I said, and, and, you, and you're right. All the absurdity, all the, the lewd, ludicrous and outlandish jokes and the James Gunn humor, it's all there. And, and, and I mean, I, I was like laughing out loud many times, even though I, I know these jokes shouldn't be funny and, but he's not punching down on people, you know, he's, or he's, it's, 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 it's all in the context of, I mean, the, of, of the, the moment, you know? So it works in that regard for me, as far as some of, as far as the humor, um, uh, and so, um, but you're right. I think that that was one of the, the third episode was, was my favorite one as well, uh, so far. And, um, and I think it was for that reason, uh, that, that, and I, and I think that's where I think where Cena is really carrying this show because and it gives that, I, I did not expect that level of depth from him as an actor. I mean, what we all know is comedic chops. But he can actually he actually can carry that emotional gravitas a lot better than I that I anticipated. I think that's what separates him from The Rock at this point. I don't know. I feel like he just got supported a whole lot by Eagly, <laughs> especially during the hugging scene. And oh, like scene, yeah. I, I feel I feel as though the only times when I am moved and when I laugh at the show is when Eagly is around. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can't help it. Yeah, well, Eagley should definitely F- should definitely get nominated for an Emmy for his for best comedic supporting. So here is here is what I find funny. We we watched Suicide Squad. We watched this show. Yeah, <laughs> my favorite supporting characters are always the animal creatures because <laughs> <laughs> we have Sebastian. Yep, <laughs> get, like an Oscar for his performance in the Suicide Squad, and now we yeah. have Eagley. Like, come yep. on. Yep. <laughs> Even yeah, yeah. I'm just oh, saying, I'm noticing a trend. Noticing yeah, a trend. Yeah, for sure. But I like this. But I will say, I did like this a thousand times better. Than Suicide Squad. <laughs> I liked it 500 times better than okay. Suicide Squad. Um, <laughs> I I I liked John Cena. I liked Peacemaker a lot better when he was around the other heroes and. <laughs> I don't know. I really liked his whole story arc in the Suicide Squad. I prefer that almost over this. I don't mm. know why, even though I I like the show better, but yeah, well, it's the end of the week. I'm talking nonsense, so that means we have to move on to another okay. show. Uh, um, well, at this point, great. I would say uh, to be determined for me. Oh, yeah. Like, Will always does this. He's like, oh, I love this show. I don't like this show. And then by the end of it, like, he's completely done a 180. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, 
All right. The and we did have another new show to, or another returning show to talk about with Batwoman. Um, it kicked off the second half of its third season last week. Um, the real Ivy is out. Yep. <sighs> okay. This show is it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't like, I, I still have so much love for this show, but it's not doing much for me right now. <laughs> not doing a whole lot. I'll, yeah. I will say for me, I, you, you know, you, you just, you, you said enough, yeah, but you didn't spoil anything for me because I, you know, I was delayed in watching the mid season return. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get around to it until I think either Sunday night or Monday night, and I I struggled to get through it. I I really did. I was just not. I was like, this is not working. It, it's not. I, I wasn't. Feel, I didn't feel engaged with it at all. This week's episode was much better. I I, I felt like okay, I'm 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 feeling a little bit more. I'm not just dis- as distracted. So. Uh, yeah, I would agree. This this episode was better. I liked. I liked about 75% of what they were doing between the Luke stuff, um, the Mary and Alice stuff, the um, Renee and Ivy stuff. The whole Diggle Jada thing. I <laughs> get them a room already. <laughs> I'm just like, why does this feel like suddenly we're watching a different show? And by a different show, I mean suddenly we're watching Arrow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is just weird. And what wait, you're telling me that Diggle knows Jada and Diggle like I don't I don't know. He's just popping up all over the place. I get it. He's gonna have his own show, but <laughs> <laughs> dude. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I guess this is their way of like, okay, here's how we can like still ground this show in the Arrowverse by bringing one of the, you know by bringing the character from that show and just sprinkling them and all these spinoffs. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand it. It was. It was. And it's. It's not just Diggle's presence. It's the whole. Um, probably my least favorite storyline this season is the the Jet family drama mm-hmm. with the Joker, mm-hmm. um, which was the whole point of this is that yeah they've kind of neutralized marcus but he's still going to be a potential threat later on they're going to try to reverse him blast him back to being his normal self (laughs) (laughs) um it is weird to me how this man like yeah he's been psychotic but he's also like been psychotic for decades yeah (laughs) Yeah. So yeah. now all of a sudden she wants to do this. Like I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Still I think, timing happening. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. I, so the one thing that is especially that I noticed this second half of the season so far has really solidified, and it, it was kind of building up towards it beforehand. But now I really, you know, I could really, really see it is that it's truly Ryan show now. You know, mm-hmm. second season, we still had the whole Kate stuff, but, you know, and they were pairing Brian and Alice. And, you know, and of course, as long as you can do that, then it's always going to be Kate Shadow. I feel like Kate Shadow is mostly, not mostly, it, 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 it's not oh, there it's anymore. Yeah. It's gone. So now it's freed for Ryan to do it, to, to do her thing. Um, and where I think with with Marcus and uh, you know we 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 talked about this during the first half of the season with the knockoffs of the the, the originals, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and you know and I, I and as I was watching the second episode, I couldn't help but think about the Flash season four with the Thinker because they had a very similar beat where the Thinker was going you know was going from. Villain of the week, villain of the week, villain of the week. You know, just random people as he was building his thing that the bomb that he was going to ultimately control people's minds with or whatever. And I thought about that in this in this context of Batwoman, and especially this episode with with you know 
I guess the the Jet's purpose and, and, and Jada's purpose of using all these tools to to you know the one thing that they didn't wait, they couldn't find and they did find did find at the end was the the joy buzzer from the from the Joker mm-hmm. and 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 so you know so I I thought two things one I was like they did it they, they learned from the mistakes of the Flash season four which is don't drag this out too long <laughs> one because I think they have a short episode count, but two, it got to the, they got to the core of it, and and two, even though Diggle, what you know, I think with Renee Montoya and and the whole Poison Ivy thing, um, it and all these other supporting characters that they've introduced, yeah, I, I finally get why they did what they did with all the various Bat toys. Or about the, the trophies that Batman captured. It finally, I finally got. I felt like this week I finally got that payoff when we we did get you know the ultimate thing, which is what Jada's goal is to to reverse what happened to Marcus. So so you know so some of those things are those are the things that are working for me now this season. And I and and even though it does devolve into the CW melodrama moments that still that this after a while i'm just start they just cringe those other pieces of it are are, are are keeping me engaged and then yeah and then diggle you know showing up and stuff it's like yeah you know the one thing that with him showing up I, there's definitely the, there's a definitely history there between him and jada and i would love to hear it especially when diggle says I, I, i'm back with my wife so <laughs> Uh, so yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, because I mean, they 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 even though it was kind of odd, it was, they they definitely had a strong chemistry between the two actors, between David and and uh, Robin Givens. So, um, I, I really would hope they explore that some more, especially given that you know, David Ramsey did sign on to film not only behind the camera but in front of the camera, uh, moving forward with these shows. Right. Um. Mary and Alice um, had some great scenes this episode. I do have mm-hmm. to say, um, I I think that last season struggled a lot with trying to find Alice a place to be in the show with mm-hmm. um, her sister no longer a part of it. Um, and they gave her a love interest to make her make us feel empathetic towards her. But that was the wrong move. They're doing major course correction. Yeah. The thing about these characters is the family bonds um, Mm -hmm. and the history. And so I'm really glad that we're, we're like pairing her and Mary together is really good working great for both both of those characters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then I really, the Luke stuff, like it's, it's building. Um, There's, there's a lot of tension between him and Marcus. Um, Luke is blaming himself for everything that's gone wrong with Team Bat so far, and but he's starting to gain his confidence back. and And I th- and I did like the last scene with him and his um, at his father's gravestone. Diggle yeah. did not need to show up. No, I'm just saying. I was <laughs> random. But um, but yeah, the 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 thing that bothered me the most was the whole Sophie Ryan thing. Like. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Um. So all right. Yeah, yeah. That I, I I agree with you there. That was where else it's like yeah we're that's the seat that's what I meant by the CW crap that I could have dealt without. Yeah. 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 Um. Speaking about melodrama. Okay, let's talk about Naomi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I had an epiphany. Watching the second episode. Okay. Um, my epiphany was, this show is not doing villain of the week. Yep. Which which I do respect. I do respect it. Um, what is driving me crazy is the Scooby Goo Scooby Doo <laughs> gang. Who like, <laughs> like I really I okay. I, there, there's just something about the kid actors, not not the actress who plays Naomi. Mm-hmm. He, the, her friends. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which i'm just like are we really scraping the bottom of the barrel like like these kids um and and maybe it's not necessarily the actor's fault um 
they just read the lines that they're given. I just, I, I mean, at the end of the episode, when when Naomi has to like self sacrifice herself, and and they're like, no, we're not going without you. And then her yeah. best friend's like, no, we got to trust her. I'm like, yeah. Really? Really? yeah, this is just like. And also, how stupid are the guys? Like, do they not realize there's something else going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like, like, there were aspects that um, they're starting to get some momentum. Mm -hmm. I like what they're doing with the father, um, even though that's kind of cliche to yeah. have him on the other side of this. We, yeah. We've seen that in other things. Yep. Um, but. Um, the other thing that is driving me crazy about the show is, okay, pick a side. Is Superman real or is Superman not real? Like, Jesus. <laughs> well, given that we, given that we uh, have, uh, you know, D is definitely, for, you know, is, is from Thagonar. So we, we, I, I, I fall, so, so I fall on the camp. Superman is real. In this universe. Yeah, yeah, I completely fall in that camp, too. I just don't know why, like, it kind of, I don't know, it, it puts not the first episode in a bad light, it's just as a weird, like, yeah. I would have, I would have appreciated these episodes being dropped simultaneously, because mm -hmm. they definitely felt like bookends. Yeah. On yeah. another. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree, and, you know, I did like the tie-in, you know, to the larger DC universe, and, and it, it also ties into the comics because, you know, with uh, with D being from uh, Thagonar, you know that that you know that means there is a Justice League there somewhere because Hawkeye and not Hawkeye, Hawkman and Hawkwoman um, are, are from there as well. And you know, in the comics, you know, Naomi does eventually ends up in the Justice Justice League and stuff. So. So I really like that connection. And then so those were the good things, you know, so you're right. That's so this show still I, I like it. It's keep it's 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 teeth it's putting out enough teasers for me to keep me engaged and interested. Uh, the the points you brought you brought brought up about the uh, some of the cast I, I felt that way too I mean it just it did feel kind of like a fan film <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know as far as the production and I was really surprised too because I was really yeah you, know, you know given you know Ava can you know we, we've seen the work that she can do and stuff so um, I don't know if see I don't know if the production company was just sort of like holding back on the budget or maybe they're trying to you know save the you know because i guess at this point they're not really focusing too much on the big theatrical super fight superpower fights and other things where you know she, she's still learning her powers and we and we see those kind of things so i'll forgive them a little bit on that but there's still there's still just some moments especially when you like have these these episodes on back to back with Superman and Lois, and you see the production value that that show has, and then you see Naomi and and how it compares to you know even Lester and some of the other Arrowverse shows at this point, um, or DC TV shows on the CW. It's like it's such a it it, it it does take you out of it a little bit sometimes when when you're watching it because it's just that for me at least because it's just that disparity there. Um, but, but, I, but I, but I'm engaged. I, I like it. I'm, 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 I'm going to stick with this show. I, 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 I like some of the little nuggets that they're dropping there. And, and I really do like the actress who plays Naomi. I think Casey Wayfall is doing, is, is, is really good. And even though, you know, I couldn't help your, your voice was echoing in my head about her being too perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Every time I was watching, it's like, thank it, Belmont. You, you, you're doing it. You're like, you're, 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 you're influencing my watching here, but you're so right. <laughs> once you, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Exactly. You can't, <laughs> you can't. No, no, it's, it's, an, it is definitely a slow start yeah. um, for me. Um, 
And and we'll see what happens. I wish that they would move to a different town. <laughs> have a different set of friends. Yeah. <laughs> just, I don't know. I'm I'm just I I mean beyond beyond what's going on with her dad, mm-hmm. I just feel like they're not building a universe so much as just focusing in on Naomi and and her powers almost to a detriment Um, and maybe it's also just fatigue because by this point we've seen a lot of origin stories told in this Mm -hmm. genre Mm -hmm. um, and we've evolved past that to now shows are picking up like Lois and Clark we didn't get an origin story there nope yeah Yeah. Um, and 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 I get it Naomi is a very new character so you have to do the origin story they're, they're just, they're somewhat playing it safe. Yeah. Um, yeah which is hard to do when this genre, we're just getting content overload. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but maybe, yeah. maybe they're, they're building up. Um, and uh, fingers crossed they are. So I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, with the UFOs and, and I like to, you know, I know uh, it, it is funny to, you know, call. I think you right, got it right. It is like the Scooby Doo gang, and you know they had all the maps and the and the, and I really did like the the one scene where they they had the old high school student, year, you know, whenever he was younger, who who did experience the day that the UFO did, you know, did crash there in, in Oregon. Um, so I thought that was a that was a good moment. You know, so there's a lot of good moments, but I just feel like the show just hasn't like just popped yet, you know? Yeah. And and so and you're right. I mean, with 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 so many things that are out there right now, you really gotta pop and you know and hopefully that third episode will be that one because I feel like if it if it doesn't happen by that third episode or so, um, you know, they already had a drop off in radiance from week one to week two they're just going to continue to lose people. And, this, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, given the CW, they probably give it another season. But but then again, you know, given their, you know, on the business side of the house, given the uncertainty with where the network is going, it may not. Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking about Superman and Lois, we did get another episode there. And... Um, this episode was fine. I'm trying to remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh, yeah. Some things did happen. Um, this felt more like the first episode of season than last week. <laughs> 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 um, I, they, I, they're, they're definitely planting seeds. Mm-hmm. Um, this, this episode was focused much more on Clark as yeah. he investigates these visions that he's having, um, which leads him to edge. And we get, we get a brotherly showdown again, somewhat um, this time in the presence of his mother, mm-hmm. um, not his father. So we're moving on from father issues to mama issues clearly in this episode. Um, we, we also have, um, this idea, like everybody wants to be a hero, so they're mining for the ex Kryptonian, and there's someone else pulling the strings and knowing that, that they might mine too far and release Doomsday. So yeah, Will, I'm struggling. Like yeah, help me out yeah. here. What are yeah, we, no, like, I, I I agree with you. I mean, there were there were this episode. I mean, I, I know it's only the second episode of the season, but. It, it was a bridge episode because we or to lay to lay the foundation for the big reveal, which I know Todd Hilbring did say already that I think the third episode Doomsday will emerge. So, um, so we did get that. You know, we got we we you know they did a, the, the techno babble exp- explanation for why Clark was having these visions. And, you know, and, and they, one thing that I think the, the, this show has been doing is, you know, they're definitely drawing on with, you know, with the, uh, with the Lieutenant Anderson, um, having his super 
army of super people. They are putting their own spin on the whole reign of Superman and death of Superman stories from the comics. Because in you know, because when Superman was was killed in the death of Superman by Doomsday, um, you know, after he died, they took the various genetic material uh, and, and different people who were impacted in the big fight in Metropolis with Doomsday. I mean, that's how you got John Henry Irons. You know, that's how you got Steel and 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 other other super people, uh, another different Superboy and others after that. So uh, they flipped the switch. They flipped it in this in, in this story. So now instead, you're going to have the super people showing up first. And you already had, you know, you already introduced still last season. They, you know, they introduced the Eradicator and and you know to be able to you know, create all the people. You know, like you said, they're mining the ex the kryptonite to uh, get additional powers and other things like that. So I think those are you know so. That's what we're seeing happen in these these first few episodes, and they're just sort of setting the table for all this. And then, of course, whoever that was, on you know, who was on the other end of, under the phone call from the the, the mining supervisor, um, you know, I hope it's not Lex Luthor, but <laughs> it's probably someone else. Um, but you know, I think that's setting up. I think they're setting up multiple villains throughout this season. So, so of course, we'll see. We'll we'll finally get Doomsday. Uh, Clearly, you know, I, I was surprised they brought Tal Rowe back so soon, as mm-hmm. far as it, you know, as far as Edge, mm-hmm. um, because, you know, but, you know, clearly they're probably going to set up some type of, you know, these stories, these, these shows love redemption arcs, so maybe this is the redemption arc that he's going to have with his brother, Um so you know, so they were planning to seed for that. So there was a lot of like seed planning for various things, and and then of course you know the eventual telegraph breakup of Sarah and and Jordan. Right. And, yeah. So you know, you know, so we saw that coming. We thought I think you even called it. What well, another thing I think you did call was Lana running for mayor. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yes. I vaguely remember. I want to go back to Edge though, real quick because. Yeah. I don't think that they're necessarily setting up a redemption arc so much as he's going to be that big bad that is always lingering in mm-hmm. the background. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not going to pull a Wells and show up as a different version every single season <laughs> and then the Thawne whenever he wants to. Right. Um, but he's definitely going to be a character that they introduced in the first season, Arch Nemesis. Um, especially with the family ties mm-hmm. and, and they're going to play with it. I think he's going to be, be ultimately, even if they do redeem him, then he's going to get quickly thrown right back to the evil sinister stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be that kind of bad guy who we have currently, um, <laughs> currently on ice. So yeah. Yeah. in the background, yeah. um, they are definitely setting up a few villains, um, which I've noticed with the show is that last season we praised it a lot because you had a villain for Clark and you had a villain for Lois. And mm-hmm. this episode, we do get the start of who Lois will be facing off against. Um, and it comes about with a story she wrote years ago. Um, and now a source is telling a different story. Um, and that source may be her sister, maybe someone else, but it's all connected to this cult leader called Allie. Um, and so I, I liked that, that again, they're staying true to the core elements of what made the show work last season. Yeah. Um, and, and this season they're moving forward. I also, this, I, I like the very few moments we had with John Henry Irons just thinking about his wife mm-hmm. and, and like they're, they're, they're slow burning that to become a big meltdown. Um, because this whole, like our home is your home. That cannot last forever. That, yeah, <laughs> it's, not not good. Not, it's not good. I, I was thinking that while I was watching episode this, I was like, this is so messed up. It, it is. It is. It is definitely messed up. Um, 
I, I, I don't know how they're going to write themselves out of this corner um, because Natalie and he- John Henry Irons are great additions to the cast. Yeah. Um, but but they have definitely have written themselves into a corner, and I'm very curious to see what they do with that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, because yeah, I, 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 yeah, it is the soap opera, like, corner they've written themselves into. But uh, it's and it, not at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just because you know, he like, he knows that that's not his wife. Right. But and and sh- just as much as Lois knows that she's not Natalie's mom, right? But but it's just it's such a it's something that we've never seen explored before. Mm-hmm. Um. So so as much as it could lean into that melodrama, it's like skirting it very carefully. Yeah, yeah. And I think about last week's episode too, with when Clark and and Lana had that conversation yep. in, the, in the kitchen. I mean, they're setting up, the, you know, because to your point, they are, they're, they're writing things and they're, they're like teasing these elements like marital strife and, and potential, you know, improper relationships and affairs and whatnot. And it's just like, I mean, are you really going to, you know, they'll probably go up to that line, but they won't cross it. Yeah. I think yeah. it's what's. I think that's where they'll go. They, you know, I think they will drag us along and they'll tease us with it. But I, I, I just can't see them crossing that line in, in this show. Is the way that the way things have been structured. Yeah. The the hard thing is, is I might become a Lois and John Henry Iron shipper. Like. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's hard I not to. I words. I, it might have. They have some chemistry. They do. They and really I do. I always, I always go all in on the the unlikely relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said when I was sitting there watching. I was like, damn, these, they do have. They they have that chemistry and and that moment. Like you said, I mean, I think you know the actor that plays John. He just he he really emoted very well with with those scenes as far as and when he was look thinking about his Lois and mm-hmm. and but they also but but I would also I like what they do recognize within within the universe they they recognize the awkwardness as well mm-hmm. with with Lois and and John because I think there was even I mean I can't remember the line in this episode but I mean they, they did they acknowledged it and they still acknowledge it. So, you know, so I think that's where they, you know where you were saying they will they may have written themselves into a corner. I think they had that's that's their escape hatch. That you know, at the end of the day, they realize like no, they're tr- tr- truly different people. And I think I think having Natalie there and her and her journey with learning how to live on this you know Earth, given that you know her dad's been there for a while, and and, and he and Clark have you know they develop develop their good relationship and stuff. I think Natalie will be the one that's a, the sort of the, the safety valve to keep, keep things in check. Yeah, hopefully we'll yeah. see on that note. Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter at will M Polk. That's W I L L M P O L K. You can find me on Twitter at SJ Belmont, S J B E L M O T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Cena Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and visit our website, www.cenanerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>